I was standing in the lobby at church one Sunday morning after just having preached a sermon on being a disciple of Jesus. As the crowd began to thin out in the lobby, there was a particular fellow in the lobby who kind of kept looking over my direction, making eye contact with me, and it became pretty obvious he wanted to talk. And so as the crowd kind of dissipated and cleared out, he made his way towards me. I went towards him, and he said, John, can I, can I ask you something? I said, sure, what is it? And he said, I've been a Christian for 10 years, and I feel like I'm still just a young believer, maybe even a new believer, because no one ever told me where I was going, and no one ever told me how to get there. Welcome to The Bible in Life. My name is John Whitaker, and if you're looking for videos to help you grow in your faith, then be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this one. And if you find this video helpful to you, then be sure to like this video and share this video. All right, let's jump right into it. Here's this friend of mine, this guy at church, who has been a Christian for 10 years. And by that point, you would think he would have grown significantly in his faith, and I think he would have said, yeah, I've grown some, but... He comes to me and he says, I still feel like I'm a new believer or I'm a young believer. Why is that? Well, because I don't know where I'm going and I don't know how to get there and I don't think he's alone. In fact, I think many, if not maybe most Christians feel the same way. Like they know they're supposed to go to church. They know maybe they should read their Bible, but beyond that, they're not really sure what the end goal is. And this particular fellow, when he, he and I were talking there in the lobby, that's essentially what he said is, I've been going to church for 10 years, and basically what I've been told is, make sure you go to church, make sure you serve in church, and make sure you give your money. And I've done all those things, and yet I look at my life and it's like, is that all there is to being a Christian? Isn't there more than that? So what's the goal, what's the destination we're after in following Jesus? In fact, uh, if you haven't checked out the video on being a disciple, I'll make sure I put that up in the cards here for you and you can click that and check that one out because we're not called to be Christians. We're called to be a disciple. And what is a disciple? And in that video, we said that essentially a disciple is somebody who has chosen to be with Jesus in order to become like Jesus. Do you hear that? Become like Jesus. Jesus. In fact, the way Jesus puts it in Luke chapter 6 is like this. He says, For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs aren't gathered from thorn bushes, nor grapes picked from a bramble bush. Here's the point. The good person, out of the good treasure stored up in his heart, produces good fruit. And the evil person, out of the evil treasure stored up in his heart, produces evil fruit. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, this passage makes me think of Christmas trees. I know that's weird, but let me explain what I mean. Is a Christmas tree dead or alive? Well, a Christmas tree is a cut tree. In fact, my family and I, every year, we, we go up into the mountains about an hour outside of town. We cut down a tree, we bring it home, and we put it in a Christmas tree stand, and we hang ornaments on it. Is that tree dead or alive? Well, here's the thing. All of us know that three or four weeks after Christmas, what do we want to do? If we're having... If we have a real tree in our house, that tree now is all dried up, the needles are falling off, we want to get that tree out of our house. But for those three or four weeks, we're excited about it. We've hung ornaments on that tree, we've put lights on that tree, we, th we think, oh, that's a beautiful Christmas tree, but it's a dead tree. And that's why this passage makes me think about Christmas trees, because Jesus is, Jesus is saying, don't be a Christmas tree. Don't be a dead tree on which you just hang religious ornaments, right? And so often we approach it that way. Like, just come to church, put on the religious ornaments, right? Like, show up at church, sing the songs, say the prayers, dress like a Christian, right? Talk like a Christian, act like a Christian. And if we're dead, if we're not becoming a good tree and we're full of the life of Jesus within us, then we're just hanging pretty religious ornaments on an otherwise dead tree. Jesus doesn't want that for us. Jesus wants us to become a good tree. That's what he says here in Luke chapter six. Every good tree produces good fruit. Think, for example, about an apple tree. 
Does a healthy apple tree have to try really hard to grow apples? Try to grow apples, try to grow apples, try to grow apples. No, it doesn't have to try to grow apples. Why? It's just a healthy tree. It's an apple tree. It just grows apples. That's just what it does. Why? Because it's a good tree. It's a healthy tree. And that's Jesus' point. Jesus' goal for you and for me is for us to become good trees that produce good fruit. That's what he's after. That's the destination we're heading to, is becoming a good tree. And so when I talked to my friend there in the lobby, basically we talked about this path, this path from new believer to young believer to growing believer to mature believer. That's the path of spiritual growth. And that path happens as we live as disciples of Jesus. Discipleship is the process. Spiritual growth is the result. And spiritual growth happens as we carry out our life in discipleship to Jesus and we learn from him how to be like him. And as we become like him, we become good trees who bear good fruit. The goal is not to make Christians who can go to church, say the right words, and profess the right things, but aren't actually like Jesus from the inside out. The goal is to have people who increasingly, by doing discipleship with Jesus, are learning how to be like him from the inside out. And so as we reach kind of the end of this path, that mature faith stage, at that stage, a person is significantly and substantially like Jesus. Their character has been changed. They want what Jesus wants, right? They, they look at the world the way Jesus looks at the world, and they do the things that Jesus did because they are like Jesus from the inside out. That's the destination Jesus intends for us, and we get there by living as disciples of Jesus, learning from him how to do life the way he would if he were in our shoes.